Yes! That's it! Akane! Did you get it? Yes! I did! I solved it! Well, I mean, really, you solved it for me, but... I copied everything you did! Now I just have to press enter! Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay! I will! I hit the enter key. Emergency shutdown command has been acknowledged. Incineration system has been shut down. Jumpy! What's wrong? It worked! It worked! The incinerator shut down! It worked! Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were a very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I had left disappeared, and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there, laughing and crying, and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Phew. I can't quite believe I did that. But I am so glad. So glad. I... I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane! Sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course! That's fine! I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then, I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now. Well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice load to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Junpei, are you... Okay. Ah, shut it. Right. Okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the inner key yet? Alright, nothing holds me back now. Here goes! Wait. Automatic incineration will take place in... 90 seconds. It doesn't sound like it's stopping. What the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again. And again. And again! Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell is going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect! So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Automatic incineration will take place in... 60 seconds. Wait... Of course! That's what these numbers under the puzzle mean. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8. Snake, Clover, Me, Seven, and Lotus. Then... Door 9. No. That's it! That number on the door isn't a 9! It's not even a number! 
Ooh, there's hidden but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a cue. Holy shit. Of course. Then we just had to put the right number into the right hand. Automatic incineration will take place in... 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Run! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Don't have much time! Man, I sure hope they can trust me in this one, or we are all fucked! Alright, no time to explain, just go! Quick! Verify your numbers of the red! Verify? Who? What combination? All of us! We all need to verify! Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Hurry, 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 hurry! Automatic incineration will take place in... 10 seconds. 9... Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, thank fucking Christ. No! No time to be happy! Time to go! Hurry! We've got nine seconds before the door closes! Go! 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 Come on, guys! Move it! Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei! Just in time! And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. We've still got to find the dead. Like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy can sure laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. I guess Snake probably can't see the sky, but he can sure feel the fresh air. I just want to take a nap. Akane! Akane! Akane, can you hear me? I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. But... Nothing. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Oi! I cried his name, even though my voice was almost gone from screaming, and leapt into his arms. Oh, Oi! Akane! I buried my face into his chest and cried again. I cried, and cried, and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. Its beat was almost like a lullaby. 
I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what had seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I passed through the door, our bracelets had begun the countdown to death. I leapt away from him and looked around. The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to and scan all the bracelets. I left the ones Honko had dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. Yeah. I took a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective, who we'd call Seven in nine years, and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide, and their mouths hung open. Alright. Let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. I was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise, and they nodded. We took off running, up the spiraling stairs, to freedom. Up, 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 up! Man, these stairs go on forever! But if they can get us out of here... No wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely hear. God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Huh? Is Seven talking? Hey Junpei, can I ask you something? What's up? The door, the one with the nun on it. Wide it open. Yeah. All five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight equals twenty-six. That makes her digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you're the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero to one. How about base ten? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base sixteen? Zero to F. After nine, it starts at A, and goes from there, B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go away past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are all the same. So I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and? What comes after that? <laughs> Q. Twenty-six! And what does that mean? That wasn't a nine on the door. It was a Q. A fucking lowercase Q. Yeah, that's pretty much it. 
I guess to put it another way. You could say it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Time for more running. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell of my body is dying for air. Damn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest. No, can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be many more of these steps left. Let's run! Run! Like a bullet down a rifle barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coil dragon. Finally! No, Junpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. Alright, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes. We're finally here. Please, do. Sure, you look like a big heavy door but you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're gonna open, and you're gonna open now! I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Aoi's. He gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I was so happy, I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us had been kidnapped. We're finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. It gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. Its last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. It's over. Aoi whispered. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue to what would happen in nine years. Yes! Finally! Air! God! Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Huh. I gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You have gotta be shitting me! What? It can't be. Is this... This is the building in the Nevada desert. Rock experiment building. 
Oh my god. This whole time we were in building Q. Sure enough, that's a desert out there, with mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I glad to see you. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right. Our bracelets. I guess I never really got a good look at the underside of one of these. Let's see what's inside you. And just a little electronic chip, like an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Figures. Akane. Jumpy. <sighs> Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. And thus we come to the end of yet another Let's Dub. First of all, before I say anything, I'm going to give shout outs to all the actors in this. Martin Liss as Seven, Orpheus as Snake, LJ7117 as Santa, Pink Shoe Chan as Clover, Creed Keeper as Lotus, Jamie the Comic as the Ninth Man, and Corrupted One as Junpei. Thank you all so much for being a big part of my series. I really couldn't have done this without you. Oh, I love this game, and I love this series, and I'm so glad that we were able to finish it. This series was quite different from my Apollo Justice series, as in the case that it was a serious drama, and there wasn't a whole lot of room for jokes. <laughs> Except for a few, of course. <coughs> Walls. <coughs> They're so blue. <laughs> oh, and um, I think this is a milestone, I want to say, in the Let's Dub Project as a finished serious series. <laughs> There were some very dramatic performances. This was a very emotional series. One of my favorites, of course, being Snakes in the safe ending. In fact, the safe ending itself was a big milestone for quality in the Let's Step project. This series taught me a few things. It taught me that there are serious moments in these series, and I cannot ruin them by either ad-libbing something or being the main character. That was the challenge. As soon as I learned not to be the main character, that opened up a whole lot of doors for me in other series that you're seeing right now. So... What's in the future for the Let's Dub project? Well, I got a little something special planned. If you've watched my I Have No Mouth LP, I did a little speech at the end where I said I might play Luigi's Mansion. Well, turns out um, I've got the idea to make Luigi's Mansion a Let's Dub. So that's what's next, a Luigi's Mansion Let's Dub, and that's going to come very soon. So you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, thank you so much, everybody, for watching the series, and enjoy. The final moments of 999. Are you... okay? Aw, oh, come on! This is nothing! Really? Yeah? You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> What does that even mean? Junpei grinned and- Ow! Ow, 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 ow! See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy! 
Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV, this thing has a pretty smooth ride. Sure was nice of someone to leave it for us outside the building. Keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in, and now here we are, screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. I still can't believe we let her drive. nothing around and there's no speed limit hey, hey clover watch those bumps all right this car jumps even a little and i think i'm gonna get crushed to death hey shut it i can't help if i'm big all right suck it up why don't you drive seven I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no! There's no way I'm giving the seat up. And Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and Six are in should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them. Don't we? Sure thing! Oh, shit! God damn it, she doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't even know a car like this could go this fast. We're sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple of hours after we'd run into the junior high students. They'd been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kid in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to them, furious. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Then he jumped on them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me! Officer! Please! You have to come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we could find was Jumpy, sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big, swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I guess I coulda. Then, why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty? Yeah, that too, but... I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh. You mean the bunnies? Yeah. The bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground, and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. Then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbit. I couldn't forgive them for that. So, 
Aye. Hey, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Well, I guess it's like Ace. Well, I guess it should say Kentaro Hungo. Why did he create the Nottery Project? Anybody? Any ideas? <laughs> Why don't you ask him yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume? Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth taped shut. Well, might as well have a little chat with the old man. His eyes just look... empty. No emotion. He looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old bastard. Let's get that tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I... I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought that if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you can understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes, if you wanted to put it simply. But, if you're looking for a more philosophical answer, I could supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness. I think that's enough out of you, pal. Time for the tape to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well... See, nine years ago after I escaped from the Gigantic... I kept going after Hongu on my own. Hoping I'd catch him when he finally slipped up. During the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? Mm. 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 Sounds like Hongo has something to say. Alright, fine. I'll let you talk. But you gotta behave. What? Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind a library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Mandragora, the family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a peculiar alkaloid from it. I used that extract to create Superil. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit, this is gonna go on forever. Tape's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions could wait for a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride.
Here. This is for you. What is this? This is a for you doll. His name is J Junpei. Jumpy pulled something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm toward me. In his hand was a doll made of yarn, small enough to fit in his palm. Jumpy, are you sure it's a, um, for you doll? Uh huh? Yeah. The lady of the shop said so. Th that means it's for you. Right? I, um, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? What? That's... Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is for, right? Yeah. I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea, then. Why are you giving me this, anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, uh, well, um, you know how after June, we aren't gonna get to see each other too often. I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and I just thought I'd, you know... Um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Oh, okay. So, so, I wanted to give this you. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. Yes, I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I, give this, it me. So we always, together. Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell onto June's tiny yarn body. Oh, Jumpy, I'll never forget you. I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and just said five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down towards the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us, leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set, and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened and one by one, the lights of the town began to flicker on. There's still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigantic. But, she's still alive now, as June. But how? Was it because I tapped into the morphic field set and saved her nine years ago? Hmm. Alright, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that, then... How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense. He's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. But Seven? 
He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or... Wait, maybe that's not it at all. There is one other logical explanation. Was what you told me the truth, Seven? You look... Satisfied. No. No way. He couldn't. Hey, look! Over there! There's somebody next to the road. Huh? What? Hmm? 